Me encuentro ahora con uno de los principales críticos de, del mundo del vino, especialmente en Inglaterra, un amigo y colega, Robert Joseph, con quien he compartido la mesa de cata en el último día de la degustación de Mundos Mini. Robert, thanks for this interview. Thank you. Um, I had a question. What would be more believable for the wine consumer, for the final consumer? The opinion of just one person or the opinion of a panel of experts talking about a wine contest like Mundus Vini? It's a very good question. I started the International Wine Challenge in London in 1984 and I've been involved in maybe uh, 60, 70 wine competitions and um, I believe absolutely in the quality of a group of people where you have a, uh, actually a, a discussion potentially and, and a, a collective opinion. However, um, there is also the value of an individual. If you are a fan of Robert Parker um, and you buy his wine, you buy the wines that he gives high points to, you are probably not disappointed. If you um, do not like the Robert Parker style, maybe you prefer the Jancis Robinson style and the Jancis Robinson points will give you a different view and maybe you'll find a wine that has high points from Jancis Robinson and high points from Robert Parker. I think that the concept of a competition like Montesmini, and I'm a director of this competition, so I'm, I'm obviously a supporter of it, is part of a, of a, of a bigger uh, picture. If you like, to me, when I look at a bottle of wine, what I'm interested in is what it has gathered um, in, a, in across time. So how many competitions has it been in? Um, it has three gold medals from three competitions, or it has two silver medals and one bronze medal or whatever. Anything that has that level of um, recognition from that many people, three competitions is probably three times five or three times seven people, it's probably not a bad wine. Whether it's my style of wine is another question, and that's where the individual critic comes in. And um, tell me something, what would you recommend for a person who has been introduced to the wine world, what starts to judge the wine only for the aromas. You know, oh, this wine is, it smells like chocolate, like strawberry, like something like that. They think, because many people, especially in my country, think that if you found a lot of aromas in a wine, the wine is good. What would you recommend for them? Because they love uh, the wine, you know? I tell you what's interesting. I, I helped to translate something called Le Nez du Vin a long time ago, which is a, a wonderful box of smells. And you can practice on recognizing particular smells of flowers and spices. It's quite expensive. So there are other yeah. versions of it. But the, the idea of actually practicing, you, know, you smell flowers, you smell spices, and so on. Whether it's necessarily the mark of a good wine, um, it's a mark of a good wine. It's not necessarily the mark of a good wine. And I think sometimes you have a wine that smells very nice because it's been in an oak barrel. But actually when you taste the wine, what you taste is the oak barrel, not necessarily the wine. Funnily enough, um, to me a wine is like, uh, it's like a movie. You have the, the first part of the movie, you meet the characters, um, you see the place they're in. Is this going to be an interesting place? Are they interesting people? Uh, then we have a bit of the story, what happens to these people. And then we have the last reel, if you like, of the movie. How do we, how do we, uh, what happens at the end of the movie? Do, do the couple get together? Uh, does the bad guy get killed? Does the good guy escape or whatever? <laughs> And when you leave the, the cinema, how do you feel? When you, when you go out to have your pizza after your, after your in Argentina beef in Mexico, maybe something else, <laughs> but when you're actually um, finishing your, 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 your movie, you come out, what is in your mind, what is in your head. And to me, the last part of the wine, what is left in your mouth, actually is, is increasingly the important part. And it's, it's, uh, the other thing I'll say is that, that doesn't, that the, the secret part of the wine that people don't often talk about is the texture. What is it doing in your mouth? And that's not just wine. Anybody who cooks knows that one source has a richness that another source doesn't. And that isn't a richness because you've put cream or butter in, possibly. Maybe you've made a very good stock with some good bones and good things in that. And it's got a real richness. And that's something that is separate to the flavor. I mean, it's maybe unconnected to the umami concept of savoriness, yeah. but it's separate. And to me, a wine that I really like may not smell of that much sometimes. Maybe you have to really get the glass uh, going and put air into it. And, still not smelling very much. It's like a shy person you meet at a party who's told you their name and not very much, but you talk to them a little bit more and more comes out of them 
and then just before you leave they say something interesting and you go away and you think I really like meeting that person I want to see them again to me the best wine is the wine where you've just drunk some and you want some more and when the bottle is empty you think oh, that's a pity I wish I had another bottle that, that to me and it's like the movie where you think I want to go and see that movie again Robert, finally, where do they find you in Twitter, our friends in Mexico? Or um, you look at uh, Robert Joseph and you will find me. Um, I'm also a wine thinker, it's the same, the same thing. And uh, I try to say things that make people maybe disagree with me, maybe agree with me, but to, to think. The, the, to me, the one adv advice I give to anybody in wine is ask questions. Always ask questions. It doesn't matter if you're in the shop or you're talking to the producer or if you are a producer or you work in a shop. Don't accept what somebody, doesn't matter if he's a critic, doesn't matter who he is, never take something for granted. Always be ready to ask the questions, why, what, how, what if this was wrong? Um, don't accept. Okay. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you. Pleasure.